right, guys, now let's go over different types of network attacks in our domain 2.4 section. So the first network attack we're going to go over is a distributed denial of service attack. So what a DDoS attack does is just aims to overwhelm a target's resource. So this could be like a TCP resource, an API resource, DNS, really anything, okay? Any sort of service or function running on the uh, target device. So how does DDoS work? Well, we have a couple of different stages in DDoS. First, we have something called the command and control center. And this is going to be where the attacker manages all his bots. And then we have the transmission of the bots. Okay, I'm going to put a B here for the bots. So now this attacker has to figure out a way to get these bots installed on a bunch of different computing systems. Okay, so all these robots down here represent infected computing systems. Like your home computer could be part of a bot net. That's our next step. Once we've installed these bots on enough computers, we now create what's called a bot net where each one of these bots is taking just a sliver of compute, storage, and network resources on the infected devices so that the end user won't be able to even feel it, right? So if that computer has 16 gigs of RAM, maybe our bot uses only 128 megabits of RAM or megabytes of RAM. You won't feel that, right? You won't even know. And most of the time, if you don't have any virus, any malware, you're not doing any sort of logging, monitoring, because why would you, right? If you're just an unsuspecting user, your computer could be part of a botnet. And then that command and control center using like IRC chats or relay chat can tell those bots in unison to do an attack, like a SYN flood attack, where we manipulate the TCP SYN flag to open up a connection, but then we never acknowledge that connection and we could be attacking like a web server, okay? Or we could be doing an API attack where we send REST APIs or whatever kind of APIs to an API endpoint to overload it. We have two different types of DDoS attacks we're gonna talk about here. One is amplified DDoS. This is where attackers exploit the functionality of open DNS, NTP, or other servers to magnify the attack traffic directed at the victim. We have reflected DDoS. This is where the attacker sends requests to a third-party server with a spoofed IP address that matches the targets, causing the server to send the response to the target instead of the attacker. So that's like spoofing an IP. Essentially, what we're saying here is that instead, like if we did a SYN flood, we spoof our source IP so that it doesn't make a connection back to us. Maybe it makes a connection back to another web server, so a reflected DDoS attack. Next, we have domain name system attacks or DNS attacks. So DNS attacks exploit the vulnerabilities in our DNS infrastructure to redirect traffic, cause denial of service, or to steal information. So we have a couple different DNS attacks we're going to talk about here. And if you don't know what the protocol DNS does, it does host name to IP address resolution. So remember, computers, they don't speak in human language. I can't tell my computer, go to google.com. It won't understand that. Our, my computer speaks in IP addressing, in binary. So to make it easier for us to navigate the internet, we came up with DNS, where we can resolve web servers' IP addresses to their well-known host name or domain name, okay? So when I type in google.com, I send out a DNS request to a DNS server that's going to host all those host name to IP address resolution records, known as like A records, C name records, okay? And it's going to tell my computer what IP address example.com resolves to. So to see this in real time, we can open up a terminal, and we can use this command here. Let me just expand this text here. We can type in NSLOOKUP. And we can do my domain, trepatech.com. And you can see that I the, D, the global DNS records, which I think my, I'm pointing to Google, like 8.8.8.8, is showing me that trepatech.com is resolving to these two IP addresses. 
So this would be an A record, okay? So now let's go over the different types of attacks. So DNS spoofing. This is where attackers insert corrupt DNS data into the cache of a DNS resolver, causing it to return an incorrect IP address and redirect traffic to a malicious site. We have DNS tunneling. So this is malicious data is encapsulated in DNS queries and responses, allowing data exfiltration or command and control communications. So essentially what we're saying here is that most filtering, like if we have firewalls, there's going to be default protocols and ports that are going to be denied that are known to be like command and control communication, botnet communication, but we can hide that in our DNS packet so that the firewall, when it's looking at the layer four and maybe the application information, it says, oh, this is DNS. That's fine. And we also have DNS hijacking. This is where attackers take control of a DNS server and change the DNS records to redirect traffic to malicious sites or intercept emails and other data. Some more network attacks we have, wireless attacks. So wireless networks are susceptible to various attacks due to their broadcast nature and are often less stringent security measures. Now, when we say less stringent, we're talking about the basic small business, uh, shopping mall center, that just deploys an access point from the ISP and they forget about it, okay? So don't the different network attacks we have to be wary of. Is it evil twin attack? So this is where an attacker sets up a rogue Wi-Fi access point with the same SSID and spoofed information as the legitimate access point. And now users connect to the evil twin instead of the good access point. And now that evil twin can do a lot of different things, guys. It can intercept traffic. It can do packet inspection and steal your information. And as a user, you may not know because it's still going to direct your traffic to the internet, right? Because that's the whole point. By deploying Evil Twin, I want to have enough time to actually capture information about you. War driving. So attackers search for wireless networks by moving around a location with a Wi-Fi enabled device. So imagine your little Pelican case, a bunch of different antennas, Raspberry Pi kit, doing Wi-Fi pineapple, you're driving around your vehicle, looking for exposed and open Wi-Fi. And then we have some vulnerable uh, Wi-Fi encryption, WEP and WPA, that can easily be cracked using like aircraft. Well, not easily, but if possible to be uh, cracked using aircraft NG or something like Hack5's Wi-Fi pineapple tool and hardware. On-path attacks. So on-path attacks oops, involve an attacker intercepting and possibly altering communications between two parties who believe they're directly communicating with, communicate with each other. So the major ones we're going to talk about here, a man-in-the-middle attack, session hijacking, and SSL stripping. So a man-in-the-middle attack, this is just at a high level, anytime an attacker sits in between your transmission between client and server, or just endpoint to endpoint, and it's either A, altering, B, intercepting and redirecting, or C, just doing packet inspection to steal information. Then we have session hijacking. This is where the attacker takes control of a user session after successfully obtaining a generation of an authentication session ID. So essentially what we're saying here, like if we were able to steal a token in transit and use that token to authenticate or maybe a secure cookie, that's session hijacking. SSL stripping. So that's where an attacker sits in line between your client and server communication and downgrades a secure HTTPS connection to an unencrypted HTTP connection and then can intercept that data. Kind of behaving like a proxy, right? To that HTTP connection and sending your traffic to that web server now unsecure, but it can intercept all that data now. A credential replay attack. So credential replay involves capturing and reusing credentials to gain unauthorized access to systems. So this is where credentials are captured using techniques like key logging, phishing, credential harvesting, right? And then they have a relay mechanism. So these captured credentials are reused by the attacker to authenticate the systems as if they were the legitimate user. Our prevention mechanisms, obviously, like we've talked about previously in this course, Use multi-factor authentication, guys. 
always have your data in transit encrypted and use time sensitive or one time credentials, right? Make sure if you're using like token based authentication, maybe you have a unique identity or an attribute that changes on that token each time, kind of like Apple Pay, right? All right, let's do our check on learning. So here we're going to go over our network based attacks. So question one, in the context of network attacks, what term describes a scenario where an attacker intercepts and possibly alters the communication between two parties who believe they are directly communicating with each other? That's going to be an on path attack. Okay. That's going to be like your man in the middle attacks, your SSL stripping attacks. Question two, which attack involves the use of a third party component to increase the quantity of requests sent to a victim, amplifying the volume of data directed to the target to overwhelm its resources. Okay, so obviously this is describing a DDoS attack, but we had those different terms, the amplified DDoS and just, uh, we went over DDoS attack. Let's go over amplified. Yep, that's gonna be the amp the answer here. They're trying to trick you with this question, or I mean, I designed it, right? So I'm trying to trick you with this question where essentially, yes, this is a DDoS attack, but we want the specifics, right? What kind of DDoS attack is this? This is going to be amplified, okay? Question three, which type of attack specifically targets vulnerabilities in the domain name system to disrupt or misdirect internet traffic? Too easy, right, guys? DNS attack. It's in the actual name there. DNS attack. Question four, which type of attack involves overwhelming a target, such as a web server, with a flood of internet traffic to render it unavailable to its intended users? That's just going to be describing an overall DDoS attack, not a specific reflected or amplified DDoS attack. Question five, which type of attack involves an attacker capturing a user's legitimate network connection credentials? and then using them to gain unauthorized access to resources by replaying the captured information. That's going to be a credential replay attack. Keyword here, right? Credentials, stealing network credentials. That's an on-path attack where we can reuse credentials that were stolen. What type of DDoS attack involves an attacker sending a flood of packets to a server with a return address spoofed to the victim's IP address prompting the server to send response packets to the victim. That's going to be reflected attack, okay? That's going to be a reflected DDoS attack. 